God, you have changed lives here. You have saved lives here. I know you have more in store for us, and we will be ready. Whoever it is out there who needs us right now, be with them. Speak to them. Let them know we are here and ready to help. Sorry about that. Well, as I was saying, what I think Shadrach... <sighs> what I think... Well, <laughs> at this point, I think I'm just starting to repeat myself. But Amy has just the song to pick us up and give us that jolt of energy so that we may live with the spirit. So, Amy, come on up here and let's jazz it up with... Yeah, the old rugged cross. That's a good one. Go ahead. That won't be the last sermon you give in this or any other church. I'll see to that. Oh, Ross, calm down. Do oh, not and don't it. pretend you're innocent in any of this, Sharon. He's your husband. You should have kept him on a shorter leash. Stand up straight. We have become a generation of people who just sit and sulk. And the only things we give anymore are good intentions. Well, the road to hell are paved with those. So what do I do with a congregation filled with people who believe that only their problems matter and that the church, the church should solve all the problems of the world while they sit and sulk? Sorry, I, I digress. I've, um, uh, do you have the ring? Is it? You did? <clears throat> you did. Um, okay, well, I, uh, I pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. <laughs> You have no idea. I, I almost fell asleep during the vows. <laughs> Jody, it's, it's not funny. Okay, Gary has to be furious. He just stood there with his jaw clenched, staring at me. Babe. Okay, so you're tired, clearly, but you need some sort of break. Take some time off. And do what? I mean, you don't know how busy my schedule is, and, and, and who's, who am I going to get to preach? And, and this whole time, we're like sitting around trying to figure out what color the hymnals are going to be. We don't have a full-time cleaning crew. And the printer is broken. Billy. And every time I take a step forward, it's like I take two steps back. It's like this 
invisible force field that's trapped me from enjoying the good things in life. And I mean, I know that this doesn't seem like a big deal to you because, you know, you, you have no idea what it's like to carry an entire church. Well, because you've always had those things taken care of for you. What's first on the agenda, Pastor? <clears throat> uh, we need to choose between the two color options for the new hymnals. Red. We have to go with red. Yes, red, the blood of Christ. Are you serious? Red stands for sin and passion. In what world is that true? The Scarlet Letter. The Scarlet what? The Scarlet Letter, the book. It's about these 1850s Puritans who put a red letter A on the chest of the adulterous woman. Well, come on. No one would ever think of that. We should all go with blue. Yeah? And what does blue stand for? Uh, water, baptism. Dad, you just made that up. Oh, really? Water is blue. I just made that up, huh? No one's going to get the reference. Who cares? <laughs> okay. Okay. This is pedantic. No one cares what color the hymnals are. All right, guys? All right? You want to know why no one cares what color the hymnals are? Because the congregation doesn't even look at the hymnals. They are looking at the slides. Really, Billy? I don't think you understand the people in this congregation. This is a traditional concern of the congregation. This is important to us. I'm sorry, Gary. I disagree. I think that uh, the, the, the people only care about... Stop making excuses for yourself, Billy. Just because you stopped caring for the church doesn't mean we have to. I've stopped caring about this church? I've stopped caring about this church. Really. All I've done is, is fight for this church. I fought and I fought and I fought for this church and I have nothing left, Gary. I have fought and I have bled and I have sweat for this church so that you old farts can sit around here talking about what color the stupid hymnals are. The stupid hymnals that no one reads because they're busy looking at the slides. Billy, and for another thing. And you can quote me on that. I don't know about you all, but that's the first time I've heard a few of those words in church. <laughs> you need more fire and brimstone preaching. I brought you a copy of Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. You should read this. My child's four and hasn't prayed the sinner's prayer yet. Should I be worried? I couldn't sleep at all last night because I was thinking that God was angry at us because we weren't taking enough communion. I called you at 2.30. Where were you? You're such an awful pastor. Where were you? I was thinking we can have a fire in the lobby of the church every Sunday so everyone remembers how real hell is. I've written Bible verses on orange slices at every soccer game and haven't led one kid to the Lord yet. I feel like such a failure and a fraud. I called you 37 times before 6 a.m. Where were you? You didn't answer a single one of them. Do I look like a wackadoo? You're not even listening to me. I'm listening, I'm listening. No, Doug, you're not. See, that's your problem. You don't listen well, you don't speak well, and you don't lead well. Look, Ross, I know you're angry. No, 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 I am beyond angry. I'm defiant. Well, this church needs change, and it needs it right now. Leave, resign. The longer you stay, the more damage you do to this church.
Hey, uh, real quick, I just wanted to check in with you about that ministry idea that I had. You know, we've got some real work to do here, Sharon. I don't think we've got time for any of that. Sharon, I was texting somebody. Whoa! Oh. Jody, hi. I, uh, you look nice. Uh, did you, did you come by to say hi? You know I can tell when you've been smoking, right? Yeah, look, I'm sorry you don't approve. It's just, I, I need a release from all of this. I didn't come here to argue, Billy. Sharon, look, I don't know what you think was going on down there. You don't know what I think? Okay, I'll tell you what I think. I think you were looking at porn in the bathroom at church, Doug. Is that what you were doing? I think that's what you were doing. And this is the church where you are supposed to be a leader, Doug. Instead, you were burning every single bridge that you have left, and that includes God and that includes me. I need some sort of release. Okay, these people are crazy. This place is crazy. You have no idea how much stress I'm under. You mean I have no idea? You're telling me right now. No, 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 no. No, because if you really, if you truly knew the kind of stress I was under, you would be pulling your hair out and screaming at a cloud and banging your head on the table. Or smoking. Stop lying, okay? I have stood by you through so much, Doug. I stood by you today in the lobby and shook every single person's hand who came through our church. And they, by the way, pay our bills, Doug. Without them, we would not have a roof over our head or food on our table. Do you understand that? Do you even care? Do you care anymore, do Doug? Care. Okay, because you stood up there today and you told them that they were the problem. Meanwhile, you're back here playing peekaboo with Satan's mistress. So you don't think I feel stress? Well, I think my life of massive stress is what makes your stress-free life possible. <laughs> you don't even acknowledge it. Oh, come on, Jody. Jody. Doug. Please, please. Sharon. Please don't go. Please. We don't want the sun to go down on an argument, remember? Doug, that saying is for people who plan to be together when the sun rises again. And that is not us. Hey, God. It's Billy. It's Doug again. I have a question for you. I mean, if you're still listening to me. If you've ever listened at all. I just don't understand what it is you want from me. I know I've made mistakes, but I've given everything to you. To your ministry. And I'll be honest, I feel like you turned your back on me. You abandoned me. When I needed you most. But let me say this once because it might be the last time. In fact, I think I might be done already. If you have anything left for me, if you still care about me, if you ever cared at all, please, my time is up. If you're looking for an opportunity for a miracle, it's now or never. Unless it never was at all, in which case, none of this matters at all. Shepherd's Canyon Retreat. You are beautiful. Thank you, God, for this opportunity to give of what I have to facilitate the change that you do here. I wonder where Ozzy is. <laughs> the only person that I know that wears Christmas sweaters all year long. Oh, God, how do people do this? Eh, I got this, I got this, I got this. Hey. I love your energy, Miss Jessica. <laughs> well, I have always believed that life was a lot like juggling. Oh. There's always going to be more things that want to come down than you have hands to keep up. Is that the secret? <laughs> yes. Well, that along with prayer. Mm. And quinoa. Quinoa. Yes. But you can thank the hipsters for that. I was worried about that generation for a minute, but then 
They gave us quinoa. <laughs> Ooh, and avocado toast. <laughs> avocado toast is okay. So good. Oh, I love your new sweater. Peace on Earth will come to stay when we, we live, live Christmas, Christmas every day. day. Catch it. Oh, nailed it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Come on, bring it easy, back. Easy, easy. There oh. you go. Oh, look, I think we got a cancellation. Well, we are here to serve if there are people who need to be served. That's right. No, I don't know what's wrong with you. And even if I did, I wouldn't know how to fix it. Now, before a lot of recent events, you and I used to be pretty close friends. Am I wrong about that? No, not at all. Well, if there's anything left of that friendship, just take a moment and listen. You can't go on like this. The church is collapsing. Your marriage is collapsing. You are collapsing. I don't know if you need to hear this right now, but I know you're going through a lot. Right now, I imagine you feel like, well, like you're stuck in a glass jar where you can see all these problems around you, but you're helpless to do anything about them. Look, for what it's worth, I don't think that you're damaged goods. This is a retreat center in Wickenburg, Arizona. <laughs> Where? Exactly. It's far away and it's remote. Shepherd Scan is a week-long retreat for church workers and their wives. Yeah, I mean, I've seen these things before. It's like they bring in a couple raw, raw guest speakers. They do some group prayers, they show some Christian movie clips. Okay, let's just forget about the retreat for a minute. Have you noticed any changes in me lately? Well, yeah, I'm, I mean, since you came back from your vacation in June, you've seemed more refreshed. I, it wasn't just for a couple of days either. I mean, you've seemed more bright-eyed and alive ever since. Yeah, well, that vacation was Shepherd's Canyon Retreat. I think it's too late. If there's anything inside you that thinks there might be a chance, then it's worth a shot, isn't it? What about my responsibilities at the church, Gary? And I, I, I can't afford this. I just called and they have a cancellation if you're willing to go next week. And don't worry about the costs. I've already paid for it. What to say? I was too ashamed to admit that I needed help before the retreat. But when I came back, I knew that it would help you too. I just didn't want to say anything until you were ready. Thank you for all the positive things you did for the church. Would you at least think about it? Canyon Retreat at Standing Stones. Well, let's get you all settled in and then we have a really nice dinner set up for you. Come on, right this way. Sharon. Sharon. Hey, Billy. Hi. This is the uh, <clears throat> light of my life, uh, Jody. She's she likes napkins. Hi, Jody. Hello, everyone. It's great to meet you. I hope you've all had a chance to get to know each other. Or not. Uh, you've all met Jessica here, and she will be our therapist for the week. Thanks, Ozzy. So I am here to speak to the, well, clinical side of things. 
I know that some pastors might be a little apprehensive at first to speak to a counselor, so it might help you to think of it like this. If you broke your arm, you wouldn't feel weird about going to see an orthopedic doctor, right? Oh, and uh, Santa's little elf here is Ozzy, and he will be your chaplain. <laughs> he can help you with both the naughty and the nice. <laughs> Ooh, tough crowd. I'm here for any spiritual needs that you have. Uh, if you need prayer, confession, communion, anything. I'm also a minister, so if you want to talk to someone who knows exactly what you're going through, I'm your guy. We have eight days to focus entirely on you. Now, this is not the time to care for or serve anyone. This is a week for us to care for and serve you. Give us eight days to serve you, and we believe that God will speak to you in ways you can't even imagine right now. We know the stakes are high in your life, but we believe that God is bigger than any problems you might be facing. So uh, dinner will be served shortly, so take your time, and then we'll meet you back at the Fellowship House for our first chat. Thanks. See you in a bit. So that's usually us, right? Big speech, fake smiles, false optimism. <sighs> all right, up top. All right, well, welcome to the Fellowship House. We're very, very happy to have you all here. Mm-hmm. We sure are. Well, I don't really have much to say tonight, believe it or not. That's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Except that we would love to get to know you all. Uh, Jody, you want to kick us off? No, I'm just here for my husband. Well, actually, this week is for both of you, equally. Yes, yeah, so well, we understand that sometimes being a pastor spouse can feel like being the background scenery in someone else's play, <laughs> but that is not the case here. We actually would love to get to know you, too. No, I'll pass. Okay, well, maybe later. Yeah, that's fine. All right, Billy. Yeah. <laughs> Who are you and why are you here? Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Billy. I am... Uh, I am a pastor for the moment. Check back in with me in a week and... I'll let you know if that's still true. I guess you could say the same for my marriage, I suppose. I don't I uh <clears throat> I got into the ministry because I felt I had a lot to give. And I gave and I gave and and I have nothing left. I am exhausted. This, this business, you know, it just, it takes and it takes. And, and the church, <laughs> well, you know, when they have uh, sucked you completely dry, they just kick you off into the trench and uh, they look for the next fresh face to leech off of for the next few years. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm here. Uh, I'm not sure why. Well, thank you for your honesty. And we're glad you're here. Mm -hmm. No, I agree with everything you just said, you know, about how this business takes from us. But I mean, looking back, I didn't start down this road because I felt like I had something to give. I felt like I owed it. I mean, everyone always used to tell me, God doesn't call the qualified, he, he qualifies the called. But honestly, I, I was never qualified. This work was never for me. It's what they wanted from me, or maybe it's what I thought God wanted from me, and I was afraid what he would do to me if I didn't listen. If this is what God's blessing looks like, I mean, maybe his wrath isn't so bad after all, right? Right? Thank you for sharing, Doug. Oh, please. Don't listen to my husband's nonsense. God does qualify the called, Doug. You have to have an open and willing heart. God will not work through you 
if you were not interested in being worked on. See, my husband likes to paint a very sad little picture of God giving up on him. But the truth is, you gave up on God a long time ago. Why are you here on this retreat, Sharon? I'm Doug's plus one. Let me rephrase. What are you hoping to get out of this week for yourself? I'm just here to support my husband. That's what she calls support, sitting here calling me a failure. Yeah, that's what we're here to fix, isn't it? No. We're... I'm sorry, and I'm sorry, but I can't do this. Yeah, go ahead and leave, Doug. That's what you're good at. You two have your work cut out for you. Good luck with that one. Well, again, we're here for everyone, including you, Sharon. Um, why don't we circle back to you, Jody? Anything that you would like to tell us about yourself? Oh, after seeing that? No, I'm, I'm good. Okay. Well, then, why don't we call it a night? Yeah. Yeah, it's been a long day, and we should all get some rest. Tonight's just about getting things out in the open. We can start working on things tomorrow. But remember how you're feeling right now, because I'm going to ask you about it again on the final night. The final night in the prayer garden is the highlight of the trip. Till then, we have eight days to explore what's behind everything that you've mentioned to us tonight. today by playing a little game called Imaginary Gift. Uh, Billy and Jody, can I have you come up front, please? Oh, uh, no, thank come you. on, Billy. It's okay. They'll have their turn. Gonna put you in the hot seat here, Billy. Hey. Have a seat. All right. So, Jody, I want you to imagine a gift that you would like to give to Billy. So close your eyes and think for a minute. Okay, so I want you to pretend to give your gift to Billy, and Billy, I want you to try and guess what it is. Okay, so, go. Is there, is there like a points or timer or point <clears throat> system? Uh, a, a basket, a tiny little basket, the little a string, a silly string, a, a dead snake. What? Keep trying. Uh, keys, keys, <laughs> keys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, keys to a uh, truck, keys to a uh, uh, plane, keys to a uh, jet ski, uh, keys to I don't uh, a motorboat. Yep. Yes. All right. Thank awesome, you. Jody. Mm -hmm. So, why did you give Billy a motorboat? Um, uh, I mean, I don't know. He kind of likes to leave situations a lot, so I kind of figured that if I got him the. I don't know, he could sail away. So that would be a sailboat, sweetie. Whatever. Okay, um, why don't you switch places? <sighs> uh, red leather, yellow leather. Wow. Red leather, yellow leather. Yeah. You're ready. I'm ready. Go ahead. I should just go. Mm -hmm. You should just go. Okay. I don't know. 
Oh, fish? No. <laughs> Loudly with the squeak. Oh, it's a megaphone. Boom. Hmm. Awesome. Why are you giving me a megaphone, Billy? What? Well, uh, I mean, she did kind of give you a motorboat, Billy. I know, but well, it's the it's the meaning. It's the meaning. What's behind the it. meaning behind it? Well, babe, you know, sometimes you feel like you don't have a voice, so I wanted to just give you. You're an idiot, Billy. What? Right. Good work, guys. Okay, good, good job, guys. Really uh, good couple good number two, you're up. Do you really yeah, no, I'm not doing this. All right, come on, Sharon. No, I really don't want to play. Come this on, is Sharon. part of your healing. Let's. So we it's can gonna heal. Be fine. Come on. Oh, you want to heal, Doug? You want to heal? All right, come on. Come have a seat. Come on. Um, yeah, sit. I'll go first. <coughs> fine, fine, fine. Come on, ready. Hmm. Half circle. Half moon. Full moon. Oh, a circle. Um. Oh no, a uh, cookie. A cookie. Oreos. Try something else. It's not Oreos. No, Doc, it's not Oreos. Okay. Oh, it's a phone. Okay. Phone. Oh, uh, rotary phone. Yes, Doug, a rotary phone. Why are you giving me a rotary phone? Well, funny you should ask. It is a phone without a screen, so you can't access the internet and look at pictures. <laughs> Okay, uh, switch places. Doug, yeah, get up. Come down. No, come on. Doug, uh, seriously, grow up. You just made me do this, it's your turn. Okay, okay, okay. It's okay. All right. You have something, Doug? Yeah. Great. Whenever you're ready. Okay. Mud. Sand. Sandcastle. You're building a sandcastle. No. Um, clay jar. Oh. Oh, what are those um, stupid things that they did at wedding ceremonies instead of a unity candle, you know? No, no. It's a... An urn? Doug, is that my father? Yeah. I don't think it was fair that your sister spread his ashes without you, so... There you go. Excellent work, everyone. Thank you for your gift in the game today. I was... I was thoughtful. Oh. You're welcome. Are you afraid to look at me, or...? Don't be silly. Of course not. Seriously, Sharon? I play that same game with the congregation. Come on, you can't kid a kidder. Dougie, I just gave you a nice compliment. Can we just be happy with that and you come to bed? No. I can't. Doug, stop being so dramatic and just come to bed. I can't. I can't lay down and fall asleep next to someone I don't trust. Seriously, Doug? You don't trust me? What am I gonna do, stab you in the back while you're sleeping? Honestly, Sharon, I think you've been stabbing me in the back for years now. Doug! Doug! We both know you'll be back when you're done looking at your dirty pictures! Wow. They had a rough day. Hi. How was today for you? Okay. Yeah? Does that all get one word answer?
sentence. Sentence. Okay. Oh, full sentence. <laughs> Look, Jody, um, if, uh, if, if, if we're going to survive this, you have, you've got to start communicating with me. I say plenty, Billy. Sometimes you don't need words to say something. Hmm. I don't... What is that supposed to mean? Is that... Is that some, I'm sorry. Um, are you implying that I don't listen to you? Seriously? Do you know that I have banged my head against the wall for years, years, trying to get you to communicate with me. And, you know, I think about, I, I think about when we started dating, you know, you were just this, you were so beautiful and you would just talk and talk and talk. You would talk for days without shutting up. And you know what? I loved it. I loved it. Jody, where are you? Where where is that girl? You don't know. That's the problem, Billy. You have no idea where I am. Oh, right. Right, because it's it's all my fault. How could I be so blind? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm so sorry, Princess. I, 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 uh, yes, of course. We're at a counseling seminar. You won't talk to me, but it's my fault. Got it. Okay. That's great. You're ridiculous. Douglas. Billy. You mind? Hey. <clears throat> ah, two pastors sit under the moonlight, retreating from their churches, avoiding their wives and engaging in their vices. <laughs> <laughs> Not how you saw being in the ministry, huh? <laughs> Stuck in a glass jar? Trapped by some invisible force field. Uh, no, no, absolutely not. I thought I was gonna be like Mother Teresa. Always calm, cool, and collected, steadfast through any tribulation, you know? Now I bet she had her moments, you know, breaking vases against the wall, and screaming obscenities into the sky. You think so? <laughs> I don't know, but I, I'd like to think so. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's this, this job, you know? We're, we're expected to be like these infallible robots or something. Like we, we, like we, we can't fill. Exactly. I mean, we carry the burdens of our entire congregation, but Lord forbid we have any burdens of our own. Yeah, exactly. I mean, God forbid that we make a mistake. Uh, Lord forbid we need somebody to carry us through our difficult times. Right, right. Like, if, if someone in my congregation is struggling, I tell everyone else, you know what? Don't judge that person. Lift them up, right? Lift them up and carry them through the hard times. So why can't they just do the same thing for me when I'm struggling? I feel you. Amen. Amen to that, brother, man. <sighs> and for the record, it doesn't bother me that you smoke. Well, thank you. For the record, it doesn't bother me that you watch the porn. Well, thank you, ah. Pastor. You're welcome, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me... I didn't check that What do you got going? Okay, yeah, let's... Yeah. 
Uh, let's call it a night. Yeah, let's do that. Can I? Oh yeah, get man, for sure. Uh, take some time. Okay. Chilly here tonight. Good night, Good night Pastor. Night. Good night, Pastor Billy. everybody else? Uh, well, today we thought we would separate the boys and the girls. So Doug and Billy are on an intense outdoor team building exercise. All right. So today I thought we would just talk about life in the ministry, specifically what it's like to be a preacher's wife. <laughs> now, I know that that role comes with some unique challenges that you may not always know about going into it. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> well, what surprised you most about the role, Sharon? Honestly, um, I mean, I always knew that I was going to play a big support role in my husband's work. Um, but it honestly never occurred to me that it would define me, you know? I mean, it, it like defines who I am as a person. And I just, you know... I have a master's degree in divinity and all of these men at his church treat me like I have absolutely nothing to offer except to be my husband's personal assistant. And it is just so infuriating because most of these men have very little formal training, by the way. And it just, I'm sorry, it's just. Okay. Jody, I see you nodding. Do you agree? Anything that you'd like to add? Uh, Sharon, let's explore that a little more. So, I mean, I, I agree. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's not always like the, the church elders at my church, at least for me. Sometimes it's my husband. Well, that probably feels pretty degrading, huh? Look, if there's anything else that you'd like to add, please just feel free to jump in here anytime, okay? Yeah. Seriously, Jody, you have some really good things to say. I'd love to hear more from you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what? If you ladies are up for it, I would like to do a little role-playing exercise. Okay, so Sharon, would you pretend to be Billy? Heck yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, and Jody, would you look at Sharon and tell her something that you would like to say to Billy? Okay, now keep in mind, ladies, I have not acted since college. <laughs> I actually played Aslan in an all-female production of The Lion, the Wish, and the Wardrobe. So, okay. hold on, I need to channel Billy, all right? So. <sighs> Jody, are you up for this? Okay. Ready? Yo, Jody. So much anger built up. Your nose right on them. So, oh, oh, please, sweetheart. I'm so sorry for that. My nose was crooked before you hit me. Trust me, it's okay. <gasps> hey, Jody, look at me. Look at me. I am just so glad I got to be here to help you get that out of your system. Okay? You did so good. You did so good. Come here. It's quite okay, a through Jody. And it's so okay. okay. You're good. You did so good. Mm -hmm. I got you, girl. I got you. Okay, today's is pretty simple. Um, I just wanted to take some time to share some stories. Now, things have obviously been a little bit difficult recently, so I thought it'd be nice if, you know, you could think back to a happy time. You know, share a story of a, of a happy day. Your happiest day, if you can. Who, who would uh, who'd like to start us off? I'll go. 
That's great, Jody. That's great. Kick us off. Well, about seven or so years ago, a Broadway production of My Fair Lady came through town. Two things that you need to know about me. One, massive Audrey Hepburn fan. I am obsessed with every single one of her movies, and so I was ex super excited about it. But number two, I've never been to prom, or gosh, I don't think any sort of big major dance gala, anything like that. I mean, my first date with Billy was a baseball game. All of our dates, I think, were either games or, you know, on-campus events, cheap, broke college kid stuff, right? So I was so excited about this, and this was going to be, you know, my prom. This was my Cinderella ball, if you will. So I thought, I'm going to go all out for this. I I'm going to make it an event. So I went and I bought a new dress, and I got my hair done, and even Billy here, he, uh, he even went all out and... Ruined it at Tux. It was hideous. Oh, uh, it wasn't that bad. Um, it was worse. <laughs> you guys, this Tux had tails and bell bottom pants. They weren't bell bottoms. <laughs> where, where would you even go to find bell bottom pants today? Look, they said that I looked fashionable, okay? Well, Billy. I think they lied to you. And also, I think you might have gone to a costume shop, buddy. It wasn't a costume shop. It totally could have been a costume shop. <laughs> he looked ridiculous, but... Thank you. you but you tried, and I, I loved him for trying. He looked so cute. What I remember the most about the night is, obviously, the show was phenomenal, right? But I don't even remember all of that. I remember more than anything that I felt like the entire play had been written just for me that night, right? And it was, I was the prettiest girl in the ball, and I had my handsome prince by my side. Maybe more like the, the toad that became the handsome prince. Stop it. You were adorable. I know. Bell bow pants. Right, that, that is a great story, Jody. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Who, who'd like to go next? I actually think my happiest day is the exact opposite of yours, Jody. <laughs> well, Doug and I were penniless. He had taken an associate job at an inner city church while I was working on my master's degree. And I actually had a final the next morning, but Doug was supposed to go <laughs> do some manual labor at a homeless shelter, but he was terrified to go alone. I was not terrified. So anyway, he's so adorable. I just couldn't say no to him. And 40 minutes later, I'm at the homeless shelter doing manual labor. Oh, oh, this part is important. So my husband led me to believe that we were going to be, you know, like scrubbing floors, painting a wall, stuff like that. Oh no, no, no. We were like cutting drywall and installing electrical wire. <laughs> Stop it. Are you kidding me? He, no. He didn't tell you? That... Oh, the worst part was the, do you remember the sheetrock? God, how could I forget? <sighs> okay, so for those of you not in the construction business, you're supposed to have this device that like, keeps the, the drywall in place on the ceiling while you, you know, screw the boards in. Well, we didn't have that. So there we are balancing these heavy boards on our heads and like super clumsily trying to screw them in at the same time. Like my neck hurt for three months after that and to this day, anytime I see exposed drywall, it, it like, immediately tightens up. It's like a PTSD reaction. Okay, so at what point does this become your happiest day? <laughs> I know, right? Well, no, that, I mean, that was, that was it. You know, I, look, I never believed that happiness couldn't be messy, you know? I think some people need perfection and they need, I don't know, a getaway, something fancy, but not me. You know, I 
I have never worked harder in my life that night. And then I stayed up the rest of the night studying, aced my exam at 9 a.m. the next morning. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I came home, slept for, I think, three days straight. But I don't know. I just, I had never been more passionate about anything else in my life. And that, that made me the happiest woman in the world that day. Okay, uh, I guess I'll go. Although, I don't think I can beat those two stories, but uh, I'll, I'll give it a shot. You know, I mean, my story is, is pretty simple. Um, okay, I'll start here. Who amongst us has cut church on a the day they had to work? Okay, so everyone. <laughs> Maybe the story isn't as, as great as I thought, but anyway, here goes. Um, Jody and I are having the knockdown, drag out argument of our marriage. I'm talking, you know, like body parts, fur. It was, at least that's how I remember it. Uh, it, was, it was pretty bad. I don't even remember what it was about. Do you? No. What yeah. Bad that was. Yeah. So anyway... Jody was distraught. I was distraught. She was forlorn. And um, I woke up that Sunday morning at 6 a.m. and I called my associate and I told him that I couldn't preach church that day and that I couldn't tell him why. And then I asked him to cover for me. And this guy didn't flinch, said, no problem. I got you covered. See, I'm going to need his number. <laughs> so we just decided to jump in the car and drive. We didn't, we didn't pack anything. We didn't know where we were going. We, we, just, we just took off. Yeah, gosh, we didn't. Well, we ended up in, in Austin, right? We ended, we ended up in yes. Austin. Three days in Austin, Texas. We bought the clothes we needed. We bought toiletries, yeah. all that stuff. And it yeah. was... Gosh, we didn't really go anywhere. We didn't do anything. We just kind of relaxed, hung out. Oh, uh, we did some stuff. Oh, oh wow. What? I am so Hi. sorry. I'm so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but it was a great trip. This was the first trip that I had ever been on, and, and I think the only trip that I've ever been on where I actually felt more revived when I got back than I did when I, when I left. Which is really interesting because your whole purpose in taking that trip was to help Jody. Yeah, I mean, that was my conscious thought. You know, but I think, I think deep down inside I knew that I, you know, I needed it. That was great. Thank you for sharing that story. It was Doug. I guess you're the only one left. Happiest day. I punched a kid in junior high. What? You never told me that. Chris Andrews. Biggest jerk. He was mean to everybody. He was like one of those kids that were held back two times and he just towered over everyone else in the seventh grade. Well. One day, Chris and his little henchmen had this kid a year younger than us cornered up in a ball. Kid had, like, stepped on his lunch or something like that. This poor kid is in the fetal position on the ground, and, I mean, Chris is just is kicking him, kicking him, kicking him. And all the kids on the playground, they're just watching from a distance. I don't, I don't even know where the teachers were. They weren't anywhere around. Well... I mean, the spirit must have filled me because I just like went into autopilot, went over there and I punched Chris in the face. I pushed him off the kid. His henchmen came over and they punched me back, which I only know because I had two black eyes the next day. I pushed them to the ground and just as they were getting back up to really put one over on me, all the kids from the playground ran over and pulled them off. The teachers finally came over and all the kids were singing my praises. I felt, 
I felt like a hero. Iron sharpens iron. Iron sharpens iron. That's good days. That's great. I mean, I, I, I'm hearing wonderful stories of, of joy, of passion, of rest, of strength. And all these things are still inside of you, even though we're going through some, some tough times now. So if you can't try and reconnect with those feelings, let's pray. That was a great night. I think I'm actually starting to feel... Sharon? What's wrong? No, it may not seem like it, but I love you. I know that. No, I don't think you do. Not really. Honestly, I'm not sure I even did until tonight. Hearing us tell our stories. Tonight made me realize two things. One is, I am so tired of living under your shadow, Doug. And I need to be involved with my own ministry, Doug. And two, you are such a strong and kind and compassionate person who's just been hiding under this timid cloak. And, and I think my strong personality has been masking your strength. Here. What is this? About a month ago, I had... Divorce papers thrown up. But I didn't have the courage to give them to you. And this is for the best for both of us. Okay, I can finally start my own career out from under you. And you will be so much stronger and happier without me constantly badgering you. Sharon, I don't think we have to give it to No, no, it's, it's okay. This is... This is good. This is a good thing, okay? And, and you're so strong, Doug. And you're gonna come out of this even stronger. I know it. Okay. Look, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna sleep in the main room. And I really hope that you can still get some sleep tonight. I'm gonna check in with you tomorrow morning. Because I'm gonna leave. Um, I'm so sorry, Doug. This really is the best thing, okay? You know, today was a good day. Look at you all, all talkative. <laughs> that story. Thank you. Okay, so I was thinking tomorrow maybe uh, the two of us sneak off into town and we can, I don't know, we could go to a movie or we could just sit and have a cup of coffee. Okay. Are you all right? I'm seeing someone. I'm sorry, what what did you say? I'm seeing someone. It's not you. I can see how this is a shock for you considering you haven't paid any attention to me in like a decade.
Maybe this will help. not a very inspiring gift, is it? <laughs> Good morning, Sharon. Counselor, how much do you know? Oh, well, uh, I got, eh, give or take, 137 texts from Doug last night, so... Yeah, that sounds about right. All right, well, uh, I'm gonna head out. Don't try to stop me. Oh, I wouldn't think of it. Oh, hey, uh, don't take the highway all the way through Sun City, because you'll hit a lot of traffic. Carefree looks longer, but it'll be a shorter trip to the airport. Thank you. Hey. It's been really great having you here, Sharon. And I'm really gonna miss having you here the last few nights. Nah, -huh. I'm leaving, Jessica. Okay, okay, bye. <laughs> oh, um, real quick though. Um, so when it's Doug's time to go, will you help him get to the airport? Of course. Okay, it's just, I know I'm taking the car. Mm -hmm. um, we're just so far out here, it's not like I can call a taxi or anything, so. Yeah, it makes sense. I know, it's just, it just probably looks really bad, so just please don't judge me. Oh, it's just, I don't judge you. Thank you. Is that important to you? Is what important to me? That people don't judge you. I mean, you can't control it, you know? And even if I did judge you, that doesn't say anything about you, it just says something about me. Yeah, I guess you're right. What are you doing? Well, I'm trying to say goodbye, but... No. It doesn't seem like you want to leave. No, 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 no. I think what's happening here is that you're trying to teach me another lesson. Is that what it is? You're trying to tell me that I need to start reading between the lines of a conversation, start picking up on the contextual clues. Is that what's going on? Is that it? Is that it? Is that what you're doing? That's what you're doing, right? I didn't say a word, Sharon. Yes, you did. You did. I mean, you didn't say it, but you said it. Because I think what you're really saying is that Doug and I, we haven't communicated for like, I don't know, a million years. And, and we're finally actually saying things to each other. And we've left these clues, right, for each other all along. And that it's worth it for me to at least investigate those clues before I leave, right? That's what you're trying to tell me. That is what you are telling me right now. That is what's happening. Sharon. That is what's happening. It yeah. seems like you're getting really upset here. You know what? You should go no, before you change your mind. Well, that would just make you so happy, wouldn't it? Because I should put my words into actions before I leave and make a decision that I'm gonna regret for the rest of my life. Is that it? Is that the message? Don't tell me it's not because I know it is, counselor. Okay. God, I'm good. <laughs> well, this this is awkward. I mean, you were things were going better yesterday, then all of a sudden, boom. Is there anything that you want to comment on? Hey. Hi. <clears throat> How's it going? It's going okay. How are you? All right. I, I don't know where Jody is, so... Oh, actually, Billy, I just wanted to meet with you individually, if that's okay. Sure. Uh, what do you want to know? I just wanted to see how you were doing. I know it's been a really intense week for you. That's an understatement. <laughs> Look, uh, Jody and I, we, we, we love each other. Uh, it's just, 
Sometimes we make each other feel... Like a rotten used towel, she has tormented me and judged me and persecuted me. She, she, she could have left me a year ago and that would have been fine. You hear me? It would have been fine, but no. She waited until the exact moment when she knew it would do the most damage and leave me then. Well, fine, fine. You know, I could, I could just... Throw up! I mean, why is he never the same person? It's like one minute I, I, I'm dealing with this over the top jokester and it's this roller coaster of ups and downs and ups and downs and we're we're up here and then all of a sudden it's just wham and it the lowest of lows where he's just emotionally unavailable and sometimes it's just easier to, to leave the room and get away from her so she doesn't have to see the monster that blows fire on me out of nowhere Dad, and I'm if just say... No, Sharon, you've said enough. It's my turn to talk. I have spent years listening to you tell me everything I've done wrong and listing all the ways I've fallen short of your expectation or God's expectations. Well, guess what? I'm only human, and so are you. I have never, ever made a list of all of your shortcomings because I thought it would be a degrading thing to do to you, and I didn't want to hurt you. Well, guess what? I want to hurt you now. So here we go. Number one. Just talk to me. Right? I mean, I don't, I don't care if we fight. I mean, we should fight. I, I think that's healthy. But we're not going to get through our issues if we don't... Communicate. I mean, last night I finally spoke up. You know, I, I said something that I knew was really just going to hurt him. You know, because I wanted him to feel how I felt sometimes, you know, but I don't know, I thought it would make me feel better, but it just made me feel really sad and tired. I'm sick of it all, but mostly I'm just tired. I'm exhausted. I want to fight for this marriage, I really do. But my church hates me, my wife hates me. God probably hates me. And you know what? They've probably all got a pretty good reason too. I'm upset, but I've got nothing left to lose. Cause I feel like I'm I'm losing it. Uh, you know, I I'm just I'm losing it with my church, I'm losing it with my wife, I'm losing it with myself. I'm all over the place, and I, I just, I don't know, maybe I have some undiagnosed thing that I don't know about. I mean, what do you think, Doc? Could I have trouble with... Opening my mouth. I'm finally opening my mouth, which felt great until last night. Why did I say that? Maybe I should have just kept my mouth shut. But I don't want that. Maybe what I want is... Balance. So, thank you, Doc. I'll, I'll call him when I get home. You know, it's oddly comforting <laughs> to think that there might be something else wrong. Even as a pastor, I, I believe there's space for therapy and... Prayer. I've got nothing left, and I'm sorry if this is rude, but I don't want to hear anything from either of you. Can we, can we please just pray for a moment? Not to say anything because I'm all out of words, but to just, just pray. Tonight's exercise is timed. Okay, it begins when I remove this lid, and you must complete the task before the timer runs out. Understand? No, 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 I, no, I don't, I don't understand. I mean, I'm sorry, did you explain exactly what it is we're doing here? I, I did not. Okay, here we go, ready, set. Wait, 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 so when you say start, what is it that you want us to do? Yeah. You'll figure it out, I have faith. 
Okay, no, but one. I'm sorry. No, 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 not one, not one, minus one. Uh, uh, because look, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be ridiculous, but uh, are you giving Sharon and Jody the same thing to do uh, the here? The ladies are in a very intense outdoor team building exercise. <laughs> Ready. Uh, Do we have a snake under that? Uh, Set. Go. Uh, Who's the snake? snake? Is it? Is it? Is it? What is it? What is it? So you love Doug, mm -hmm. but you want to divorce him. Mm, kind of. <laughs> All right. No, I know. That's not a late decision. Um, I don't know. I mean, I've been thinking about it for a long time, but this week has been really good for us, you know? We're good. finally saying things to each other that have needed to be said for a really long time, mm -hmm. you know? And I guess I just, I don't know where we go from here. Like, is anything actually gonna change when we go back home? Yeah. I mean, the week's not over yet though, so. That's true. What about you? You gonna leave Billy for this mystery man? Mm. No. No, you said that so like, definitively, no. Mm I made it out to be more than it actually you made was. It up. I didn't I didn't make it up. I didn't make it up. It was an ex of mine from high school and he kind of messaged me out of nowhere, you know, and it just turned into emails back and forth. And I get it. Some of them were probably a little flirtier than they probably should have been, right. but what I got caught up in was he was listening. You know, like my opinion mattered. Yeah. My voice was heard and I got so attracted to that. Right. Like, you wanted that attention from Billy. Yes. It wasn't about the guy. I still do. Yeah. No, I get it. I get it. Well, I mean, now that you've had that realization and you've had a couple days here, where are you at? You still talking to this guy? No. No. I definitely... The grass is not any greener over there. No, it's not. Mm. Cheers to husbands. So, I mean, I don't, I don't get it. Are we just supposed to eat it? Or is there like something deeper going on here? I'm, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. You know, I mean, it's white, right? So maybe it has something to do with purity. <laughs> oh, porn? Oh, yeah. nasty girl, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I know, I actually moved out for a week when I found out. Good. Yeah, no, no, I mean, it's wrong and it's bad and it can be dangerous and mm -hmm. it hurts me mm -hmm. a lot. But I keep thinking about you know, if somebody came to my church that had a drug addiction and I treated them like Doug, you know, they'd probably go right back to drugs. You know, maybe we are just supposed to eat it, right? I mean, Ozzy could be just messing with this. I, I, I wouldn't put it past him. I mean, you saw the jacket. I mean, that is true. It's kind of a character, right? I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, I guess let's just eat it and enjoy it. And it's got to be whatever exercise they have the ladies doing, right? Exactly. <laughs> okay, but um, what are you supposed to do? Just condone it? No, 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 no. But, you know, I keep thinking about that verse from Matthew where Jesus is talking about the Pharisees. And he's mm -hmm. saying, you know, they, them, they will put heavy loads on men's backs, but they themselves will not lift a finger to move anything, right? Yeah. So what does Jesus say is the most important commandment? Love. Love. Right. Yeah. So, I don't know. Lately, I've been thinking, maybe I'm fighting all these battles with the wrong weapon. Okay. I have a confession to make. Yeah. I know I play this whole, like, porn thing off like it's no big deal, but, I mean, come on. I know it is. If Ross or any of my board members were to find out about it or, say, some jerk posted it online, I'd, I'd never work in ministry again. <clears throat> Look, can I be honest with you? I, I, I don't mean to be a jerk here, but quitting for someone else, it never works. And I, I'm, I'm speaking from experience, man. I mean, that, that kind of motivation lasts about five minutes. Yeah, I mean, it's not just that. It's, it's like it wasn't, it wasn't my escape. But and it's funny, since we've been at this retreat center, I've found like I have a new spark of life. I mean, like I can hear God whisper to me again and I find myself wanting to pursue my wife again. Ah, okay, that's something. So you're saying that you found something else you wanna pursue? Yeah, yeah, but like something that 
doesn't haunt me every time I close my eyes and makes me feel good about myself, you know what I mean? Right, but quitting is hard. Well, quitting alone is hard. We can't do this alone. We need each other. We gotta form a team. Let's go get some more ice cream. I like peanut butter. I like ice cream, but I don't understand peanut butter on ice yeah, cream. Just a yeah, just a little bit of Yeah. I can't tell you how nice it's been to share with somebody who actually gets what I go through. I know, I feel like a Smurf that just found out other Smurfs <laughs> exist. Okay, we've gotta do something nice for the ladies, like really nice. Yeah, well, you know, Jody's all hot and bothered for some other dude, so. Well, I mean, my wife just literally handed me divorce paper, so come on, what's your point? That's fair. Okay. So what would make Jody feel really special? And I don't know, okay. you know, I mean, but look, I, she needs to be treated like, like my fair lady okay. or like Princess Dyer, Britney Spears, or I'm riffing, uh, I'm riffing. Are, okay, no, okay. that's not, that wasn't. Okay, but I, 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 I'm getting an idea here though. Let's, oh, I got a good one. It's gonna take like a lot of work though. I mean, are you up for it? Okay. Yeah, but what about you and Sharon? Mm, I don't know, man. Yeah, dude, she needs an adventure. Okay, but what, like, take her to Paris in the morning or? No, you're right. Uh, we got a lot of work to do right. tonight. Yeah. Hey, iron sharpens iron. Iron sharpens iron. Let's go. Get back to the chop. Yeah. Okay. Hey. Hey. Red carpet events? Yeah, Jessica said I could borrow it. Is this part of your, your Christmas decor? Mm-hmm. So, what is it with you and Christmas, anyway? Well, Christmas is when we celebrate the birth of Christ. Yeah, yeah, I got that. No, it's also when we celebrate forgiveness. Jesus came to forgive. He came to forgive you. I know. He's already forgiven you, Billy. morning to all of you. Everyone has put in a lot of work this week and I am really proud of how far you've come. Today is your day off. You've earned it. We have more to do tomorrow, including, well, a special little something in the prayer garden. If I could make a recommendation, spend time to connect. We've spent a week tearing down walls. So my next question for you is this. Now that those walls are down, what structure do you want in its place?
Today was a really beautiful day. Yeah, Wickenburg's a cute little city, isn't it? Yeah, who would have thought? Just slap down in the middle of the desert, <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. Oh, actually, I've got something else for you. A shower cap. It's what's inside. It's Billy's number. Oh. Okay. I asked him to be completely honest about how I'm doing if he calls you. We're going to hold each other accountable for our vices. And I promise that I'm going to find healthier ways to deal with my frustrations. I'm all in. You're not worried about your nagging, controlling, overpowering, strong-willed, big-mouthed wife being a burden to you? Mm, honestly, maybe just oh, a little. <laughs> but no, I mean, I think we've both made a change here for the better. I'm tired of pessimism, so I'm choosing to bet on us. And these healthier ways of coping with your frustrations? Yeah, I haven't quite figured that one out yet. I think I can help. Oh. Other guy. It was just some stupid emails from an ex. It was never anything more than that. I'm so sorry. I know that it's wrong. But it was never anything more. supposed to be the quiet one here. I don't know what else you want me to say. I was just feeling like I... I, I want to introduce myself. Hi. I'm Billy. I'm the pastor of a church that's been going through some hard times, and I smoke, and I've been neglecting some of the people in my life. But I love Jesus, and I love my family, and no one that I have ever cared about has lost my love. Hi, Billy. I'm Jody. Hi, Jody. I'm kind of soft-spoken, but when I do speak, I usually am Afraid I'm saying the wrong thing, but I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm working on a lot of things. Kind of a constant work in progress. I know it's not the most desirable trait. Actually, as a work in progress myself, it's the most desirable trait. This has been a big week for everyone. You arrived here eight days ago, reeling in pain from the glass walls that you hit. Invisible problems that surprised you along your life's journey. Ministry is full of landmines. Sometimes we step on one, then another, and then another. And as the pain rolls in, we as leaders sometimes feel like we have no one to turn to. So we pin that pain inside. Sometimes that pain leads to things like anxiety or depression. We sometimes show that pain by lashing out at others, oftentimes those closest to us, those that we love the most. You have all spent this week doing the hard work, opening up, confessing, and learning about these glass walls in your life. So 
The question becomes... Are you ready to shatter your glass walls? Isaiah says, Yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. Therefore, he will rise up to show you compassion. Do you believe that God loves you warts and all? Can you feel Jesus tapping on your shoulder, telling you he knows all your dirt, seen all your skeletons, and yet he loves you anyway? He asks, are you ready? I'm ready to shatter my glass walls. I'm ready to start shattering. We're, We're ready, ready to, to shatter, shatter our, our glass, glass walls. walls. At the base of the cross here, there are a number of stones and markers. Whatever you're leaving here today, please write it on a stone and leave it at the base of the cross. Describe your relationship before and after Shepherd's Canyon retreat. Toxic. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was pretty toxic yeah. before we went to the retreat. We didn't know how to fix it at this point. You know, he was so sad and just kind of overwhelmed. <sighs> completely overwhelmed. Um, I'm also really excited because Doug is uh, delegating a lot more responsibilities at the church to actually help me start a ministry that has been on my heart for a really long time. For the first time in a long time, I feel like I have a voice again and he wants to hear it. It matters, my opinion means something. Uh, look, I just wanted to come over and, and, uh, and tell you that I realize that, that I, I have a lot of anger but I'm not angry at you. I just feel like a lot of it's been directed at you. And I, and I'm, I, I just wanted to say I'm sorry for letting you down. And I, I, I'm not saying that I'm cured, okay? I'm not saying that I'm cured. I'm, I'm, I'm still, I've got a lot of work to do. I've been going to therapy. Billy, stop. We've approved a sabbatical for you to take whatever time you need to heal. Well, I, I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm really sorry. Hey, stop apologizing. It's time for you to start accepting the healing. Shepherd's Canyon saved our marriage, I think. Yeah. You know? Like a healthier couple, I guess. You know, I don't think we would have done that without that retreat. It's been a gift. That place Highly is recommended. a gift. 10 out of 10 stars. There was an anchor that I had to let go that wasn't only draining a lot of my energy, but was holding my church and my wife down. And um, I had to let it go. Point number 14. We reduce the number of worship songs to 30 pre-approved options. Point number 15. We make fundraising for our new gymnasium our top priority. Point number 16. We remove the cross and focus on more neutral, positive elements to sort of pull people in. And finally, finally and most importantly, this plan calls for the removal of Pastor Doug and the immediate search for a better fit for this congregation. <sighs> Look, everyone, I know I've made some mistakes, a lot, a lot of mistakes. And I've spoken with each of you individually to express how sincerely sorry I am. 
I spent my time at Shepherd's Canyon Retreat, not running from the cross and new challenges, but embracing them. And I think that's the direction we need to go here. All right, Doug, I think you've said enough. I call for a vote. I motion that this board issue full confidence in Pastor Doug and that we register an official apology on the record to stand as a reminder to future board members of this church that we have an obligation to care for our pastor as he so diligently has cared for us. May this church never take any pastor or ministry worker for granted again. Nice speech, but don't forget we- Oh, and that we remove Ross from the board. Do I have a second? I just married him for the beard, so. <laughs> Look at that smile. See? Look at that smile. It's good to, good to see it again. Thank you. Love you. Cheers to four more lives that God has changed here and many more to come. Peace on earth will come to stay when we live Christmas every day. Every day.